Good morning, everybody. Mr. Poli on this gloomy Monday morning, but not going to let that get me down. Today is the first day of our virtual spirit week, so you'll notice that I'm not wearing a shirt and tie today, but I'm wearing my favorite color green. I also have a watch to match that, and I'm wearing green socks, but you guys can't see those right now. So I'm celebrating Spirit Week with my favorite color. I don't really have any good tie-dye to wear, so this is it. My green dress shirt was not clean. So this is me today. Hope you guys are having a great day so far and had a nice weekend. We're continuing along today with our study of functions. Functions as the cornerstones of algebra, or as the cornerstone, cornerstones, cornerstones of algebra. Um, like I said, it does kind of lay the groundwork for our whole study of different kinds of functions throughout this course. Um, if you guys can notice my screen with the lighting is being a little weird today, so we're going to try to do our best either way. Okay, today's lesson is on page 57 and 58. This is one-to-one -one functions. Okay, one-to-one -one functions. That's what we're studying learning about today. Okay, uh, we're gonna jump right into this with exercise one here, considering these two simple functions given by the equations f of x equals two x and g of x equals x squared. Okay, so f of x, we will show over here, illustrate over there, like a bunch of artists, and here we will illustrate g of x. All right, we have the domain for each, and you'll notice the domain is the same. Negative 2, 0, and 2 are our three domain elements. They are three inputs for each of our functions. So when we compute the range of f, remember we have to use the function rule. So f of x, I'm going to write that right in the middle here. f of x equals 2x. Okay, so you'll see there that each input value, negative 2, 0, and 2, has to be substituted in for x to get our range values. So when we do that, I'm not going to show all the work, but we get negative 4, 0, and 4. Okay, and one thing I didn't draw out on the last set of notes with domain and range, when we have a mapping diagram, like we, that's what these are here with the big bubbles, Okay, the big ovals that contain our domain and range elements, domain and range elements. Okay, you should draw these curved arrows over. Oop, not like that. You don't want to drag the whole page. Okay, but when you do that, that completes our mapping diagram. Okay, it shows which input goes to which output. So negative two brings us to negative four. Again, you don't want to drag the whole page. Okay, negative 2 brings us to negative 4. 0 gives us 0, and 2 gives us 4. All right, I'll step back so you guys can focus on that for a second. When we do our find our range of g, again, I'm just going to write in that g of x function, which equals x squared. And when I compute each of those, now we do negative 2 squared. Okay, that's negative 2 times negative 2, which gives us 4. Then when we input 0, we also get an output of 0. And when we input 2, we get an output of 4. Okay, again, I'm going to draw my arrows over to complete my mapping diagram to show which input goes to which output. Okay? So negative 2 goes to negative 4, 0 goes to 0, 2 goes to 4. That is our f of x function. And g of x, negative 2 goes to 4, 0 goes to 0, and 2 goes to 4. Okay, so take a look at both of those. Look at f, look at g, look back to f, look back to g. Okay, what is fundamentally different between these two functions? and how the elements of the domain map to the elements of the range. What do you guys notice here? Specifically with the range values, okay? That's right, each, in f of x, each of our inputs goes to a very unique output, okay? Neither the inputs 
nor the outputs repeat here. But in G of X, that's not true. Okay, our inputs do not always go to unique outputs. Hopefully you guys noticed that here the inputs of negative two and two both go to positive four, okay? So that, for this lesson, is not so good, okay? So in G of X, we can write two different inputs. And remember, the inputs are in our domain. The inputs are in our domain. Those are our Xs. Two different inputs give the same output. Right, and our, the output again is our range, those are our Y values. So you'll see again the two different inputs of negative two and two give us the same output in positive four. So different inputs here give the same output. That's the big idea of today, okay? This f of x is a function and it's also one to one. It's a one to one function. But g of x, because of these repeated output values, it is not one-to-one. -one. Not one-to-one -one because of the repeated outputs. Okay. So here, the box is always important. Let's give that a big star on either side. Okay, one-to-one -one functions. There's some weird notation in here. It says a function f of x is called one-to-one -one if given one x does not equal another x, that implies that f of that first x does not equal f of that second x. Okay? So what that really means, if we can read through that notation, is that different inputs give different outputs. Okay, they're saying it's one-to-one -one if... If two x's don't equal each other, their outputs don't equal each other. Okay? Different inputs have to give different outputs for it to be one-to-one. -one. So let's look at exercise two. Of the four tables below, one represents a relationship where y is a one-to-one -one function of x. Okay? So we're moving past just being a function of x. But now we're looking at being a one-to-one -one function of x. Okay, so determine which it is and explain why the others are not. So if we take a look at our first relationship here, you see our x values of 4, 4, 9, and 9. Okay, 4, 4, 9, and 9. We have to figure out, is that a one-to-one -one function? Well, hopefully, guys, hopefully this jumped out to you right away. Both our x values repeat. Okay, we have multiple fours and we have multiple nines. So because of that, choice one here is not even, it's not even a function. Okay, so number one can't be one to one because it's not even a function to begin with. All right, what about number two? Well, our x value is negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. That seems okay. Looks like it could be a function at least, right? We don't have any repeating x values. But when we look at our y values, read through those with me, we have 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, and because of those, because of those repeating 1s there, that is not 1 to 1. Okay, repeating y values means it's not one to one. Repeating outputs. All right, let's look at number three. We have x's are one, two, three, and four. Nice and consecutive, boom, boom, boom. What about our y column? Well, we have two, four, eight, 16. What's that look like, guys? Looks like we don't have any repeating x values, which means it's a function first and foremost, and then our y values also not repeating. So yes, that is one to one. Hey guys, sound the alarm, ring the bells. We found our one to one function. But just to make sure, let's look at choice four, right? 
So our x is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2. Uh-oh. Right there, guys. Again, hopefully you guys are like, oh, no, stop, Mr. Foley, stop. This is not a function. Okay? We don't even need to check if it would be 1 to 1 because it's already not a function because of the repeating inputs. Okay? This would fail the vertical line test. Okay? All right. On to the back. Okay. Exercise three. We got making good time here, and that's good because I've got a class in 15 minutes. I'm not going to tell you what class I have, but I have a class. All right, so exercise three. Consider the following four graphs which show a relationship between the variables y and x. Okay, we have four very different graphs. All right, we have a parabola, which is a quadratic function. Here we have some sideways m, which uh, I don't know what kind of function that is. Or maybe is it not a function? I don't know. Here we have a circular graph, and here we have a line. All right? Circle the two graphs above that are functions and explain how you know they are functions. Hmm. Well, hopefully, I very much hope right now that everybody's thinking of that three-word test, the vertical line test, also known as the VLT, right? Because the VLT does a nice job checking really quick if we have repeated inputs, okay? So let's see, vertical line test here. Do we hit more than once anywhere? No, it looks like each of my vertical lines only hits the graph once. So that means that is a function. What about number two? Again, test with those vertical lines. Oh boy, one, two, three, four. Holy cow, holy cow indeed. Any one of those vertical lines hits that graph four times. I mean, twice is way too many. So four times, whoa, no, no, no. Abort, abort. Number two is not a function. Okay, number three. I know you guys can do this on your own, but with a circle, each of our vertical lines hits twice. Like we just said, that's too many. So three is not a function. And number four, it's a nice diagonal line. So each of these vertical lines, when I test, only hits once. So graphs one and four, those relationships are functions because they pass the vertical line test. But now this says, of the two graphs you circled, which one is one to one? Okay, we're down to choice one and choice four. One of these is one to one, the other is not. Okay, remember that box that definition on the front side of our notes. It said different inputs give different outputs. Okay, in order to be one-to-one, -one, different functions have to give different outputs. All right, so if we're going in order, let's look at number one. Okay, we need to see, do we have, let's see, if we look over here, well actually, Here's an output of zero. That's an output of zero, right? Because the Y value there is zero. You guys can see I'm circling the root. Okay, where that graph hits the X axis, that is an output of zero. So I'm going to draw an arrow there and say Y equals zero. I need to, I'm looking for on my graph to see if there's another input that gives an output of zero. Do I have another point where y equals zero? Well, let's see, right here again, on the other side of the graph, where that graph hits the x-intercept, that again is an output of zero, okay? So here we have two different inputs. This looks like it might be x equals negative four, and this might be x equals one, okay? Those are different inputs but giving the same output of y equals zero. And for that reason, 
This is not one to one. Okay, graph one is not one to one because different inputs do not always give different outputs. And just to verify, if we look at choice four, do we have any spot on this diagonal line where we have two of the same outputs? That's a question, and the answer is no. Okay, you'll see this diagonal line is constantly going up, so you're never going to repeat a Y value. You are never going to repeat a Y value, so this is one to one. Okay, lucky number four here, that's our winner. Okay, he won the one to one game. All right, so I'm sure you guys are thinking there's got to be maybe an even easier way to determine if a graph is one to one, if a function, if a relationship is one to one. And hey, I'm glad you guys are wondering that because there is now this thing called the horizontal line test. Okay, you guys have worked so many times with the vertical line test. You guys have that tool in your pocket. Use the vertical line test to test if things, check if things are functions, if relationships are functions. Now we're using the horizontal line test, okay? So just like the vertical line test, when we're given a graph, we can simply draw a horizontal line straight through that graph. And again, if that horizontal line hits a graph more than once, it's not one-to-one, -one. okay? And it explains that right here. This test works because horizontal lines represent constant Y values, okay? Just like a vertical line represents constant X values, horizontal lines represent constant Y values. So if a horizontal line intersects a graph more than once, that means an output has been repeated. Okay, if your horizontal line hits more than once, an output is repeated and it's not one-to-one. -one. Okay, it fails the horizontal line test, which means it's not one-to-one. -one. So looking at number four here, which of the following represents the graph of a one-to-one -one function? Okay, well, now that we know about this handy-dandy horizontal line test, let's use it. We got it, let's use it, guys. Okay, horizontal line, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Each of those times I hit only once. Okay? So that could be one to one. But I forgot something very important, guys. Maybe you guys were yelling at me to do it. I should have first used my horizontal line test. Okay? It can't be a one to one function if it's not first a function. So vertical line test, boom. Boom, what happens here? Oh no. Okay, that vertical line test hits the graph more than once. So that's not even a function. All right, number two, vertical line test. Vertical lines seem okay. Okay, so this second one is a function, but now is it one to one? I don't know, let's see here, horizontal line test. Looks like we failed that horizontal line test. So that is not one-to-one, -one. okay? Number three, vertical lines. Seems to do well with the vertical line test, only once there. And what about the horizontal line test? Same thing, we only hit once. When we tested vertical, we only hit once. Now testing horizontal, we only hit once which makes it a one-to-one -one function. Okay, and just to verify again, number four, we saw the same kind of graph above. We see that this would, in fact, fail the horizontal line test, hitting twice, which means it's not one-to-one. -one. Okay, so choice three there is one-to-one. -one. It is a one-to-one -one function because different inputs give different outputs. It passes the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. All right, last one here, exercise five. The distance that a number X lies from the number five on a one dimensional number line is given by the function D of X. So the distance of X 
is equal to the absolute value of x minus 5. So show by example here that d of x is not 1 to 1. So I need to show that using this function, if I put in two different inputs, two different x values, I could get two, sorry, I could get the same y values back, right? Different inputs will give the same output sometimes. So since I know how this works, I'm just going to show you guys straight away how it works. I'm going to use x equals 4. So I need to evaluate that function for my x value of 4. When I plug in 4 here, I get the absolute value of 4 minus 5, which equals the absolute value of negative 1. Remember, the absolute value always spits back a positive number. Because the absolute value is really the distance something is from zero. Okay? So an input of four gives an output of one. You guys are thinking right now, maybe try to think what other input would possibly give an output of one. And that input would be six. Okay, substituting in the absolute value of six minus five equals the absolute value of 1. Again, the absolute value of negative 1 and the absolute value of 1 are both 1. So different inputs give diff or different inputs, like I was saying, give the same outputs, which means it's not 1 to 1. Okay? And we just showed that by example. Okay, two different inputs give the same output that is not one to one. And if you guys were thinking about this before, an absolute value graph has the shape of a V. Oops. Okay, so just like just like with a parabola, you can see this would fail the horizontal line test meaning there are repeated outputs, repeated y values, okay? And again, that is not one-to-one -one because it failed the horizontal line test. All right. So that's about it from me for now, but you know there's always more to come, so stay tuned and take care.